So, here's the plan. Rugby in Ireland has become increasingly popular at all levels in the last few years. Our next entrepreneur waiting to face the Dragons believes he has designed a unique training aid for all standards of player. The standout dragon for me is Gavin. He has a good understanding of rugby. Hello, dragons. My name is Michael O'Reardon. This young man is Connor Sheridan. And I'm here today to present to you a brand new Irish company called Rugby Master Limited, for which I'm seeking a 50,000 euro investment for a 20% stake. Rugby Master has designed, developed, prototyped, and patented a new range of rugby training equipment suitable for players at all ages and all skill sets within the game of rugby. The inspiration came from watching my nephew practice his line-out skills against the gable wall of his mother's house. It wasn't the most satisfactory training exercise I've ever seen. Before we actually got into producing the product, we went and researched, was there a suitable piece of equipment out there? Across the entire rugby sports equipment categories in all major rugby markets, we couldn't find anything that served the purpose we wanted to do. What I'd like to do would be to invite Connor to demonstrate what the machine does. And after that, to take your questions. Michael believes he has designed a first to market rugby training aid. But will he survive a mucky round of questioning and secure 50,000 euro for 20% of Rugby Master Limited? I'd like to thank Connor for uh, his help here today. So, Connor, thanks very much. Off you go. Talk to you later. Cheers. Now, I'd be very happy to ask any of you who wants to throw a rugby ball to come up and take a shot. We should have a, a throw, I think we? you need to, Eamon. Yeah. <laughs> this junior unit is set for pass training. Now, Michael, I have a question for you. I've never thrown a rugby ball, so which is more difficult? Um, that's more difficult, all right? All right, I'll try that one then. Oh! Oh! <laughs> he wears a scrum half. This will be no problem. Oh! oh Barry, <laughs> go ahead there. Oh! <laughs> Missed. Ah, oh, lads. Just for the record, never thrown a rugby ball before, picked the most difficult and got it right. So, Michael, that's the Devon Toner at the back and that's the Peter Stringer at the front. We have a much larger unit than that, which is, which is the Pro machine. But there are four different machines. There's three, but this one has a dual purpose, which is as a pass trainer. And then by inserting a, a third pipe into the middle here, we can raise it up for it to become an overhead trainer. So, your typical rugby club, how many of these units would you see them order? There's a good question. We haven't actually been out to sell the product yet. Okay. Um, but of the clubs that I've spoken to, they would see themselves requiring a minimum of 12 of these to have effective training sessions. Hi, Michael. Can you tell me what your price point is? The product is being manufactured in China. The target price points, end user price points, are 125 euros for the junior, um, 240 euros for the intermediate, and approximately 500 euros for the finished pro version with all of the accessories. What's your margin in between? We're looking at a trade margin across the board at 45%. No sales or you haven't been out to, it, to it, talk to the clubs uh, so far uh, because you've been developing these prototypes. Did I hear patent as well? So you must, you, you, you have a significant upfront investment so far, how much? Uh, so far, my outlay on it is about 20,000. Right. And the patent is what? There's approximately six distinct aspects of the apparatus which are patentable. Look, as you can see, the base is a basketball stand. So we've used pre-existing product, which is there. The um, unique patentable aspects are in the upper frame and in the catch net. And the aperture, which is designed specifically for the training with a rugby ball. The aperture looks like a hole to me, so it's a hole. it could be a tennis ball, any spherical ball, it wouldn't have to be oblong. What hasn't been done in rugby uh, specifically is something of this nature with the receiving net, the catch basket and the return screen. What have you thought about in, in terms of the distribution the, model? The, the plan on this very firmly is the, um, the company which is registered in Dublin will in turn be registering a Hong Kong company 
and the product will be sold on an FOB basis to distributors or major multiple retailers. We will not be selling directly as, a, as an entity, as Rugby Master Limited, directly to clubs, etc. We would be looking to appoint a distributor in each of our marketplaces to do that. What are the projections or when do you hope to be in the marketplace selling? Hoping to be market ready September this year. And what sort of figures are you projecting? Year one figures. Um, we're estimating approximately 800,000 euros. Of that, 75% of those aiming would be on the junior Tromaster. And you're making 45% on that? We're making 45% on that. So the unit cost on that would be at 25. Is there a well-established distribution chain for rugby? It just seems like you're giving a lot of margin to the distributors to get to a small number, you know, for only 4 million players worldwide. The key customers for us in year one are going to be toy retailers rather than sports retailers. Michael, if you've identified your market, have you attacked it? Not have yet. you spoken to the likes of Toy Master? Have you spoken to uh, WH Smith, the people who sell toys? Um, well, I've been dealing with Toy Master for 20 years in Ireland. They wouldn't necessarily be um, the number one people we'd be looking for. We'd be looking at people like Toys R Us, Smith's Toys, um, John Lewis, Tesco. There's really only a handful of people. The, within, certainly, if you're looking within the UK, mm. there are eight to ten people. You could very quickly find out the answer as to what their appetite is. Um, you very quickly could, yeah. yeah. Have you worked in the toy industry, Michael, when you say... You, 20 you... years, Gavin, as an importer and distributor. What's been your most successful uh, product so far? Five years back, I designed and developed and brought to the market a product called Hurley Master. Unfortunately, I didn't protect the intellectual property rights, I didn't patent it, and two or three other copies hit the market fairly quickly and decimated that. Michael, can you break down the, the projections? Like, what percentage is going to go to rugby clubs versus, you know, through the, the toy channel to, to consumers? Right now, as I have the figures formulated, approximately 75% of sales will be on Rugby Master Junior. Of that particular volume of it, 90% of them will be to the end user market. So only about 10% of what we sell will be into clubs. Michael, can I just tell you where I'm at on this? You, you've been embedded in this area for 20 years. Uh, you seem to have the right contacts. I'm not sure what I could add to that package. So for that reason, I'm out. That's fair enough. Thank you for your time. Michael, I really enjoy that, by the way. But I have a rule. I never invest in anything I don't fully understand. I don't fully understand rugby. I wish you well with it, but I'm out. Thank you very much for the kind words. Thank you. Michael, the, the product is impressive, and it was great to see the, the Monster Dragons beating the Leinster Dragons here today. No surprise to us, of course. <laughs> but I don't think the market is big enough globally for this. It's not really scalable enough, so I'm out. Okay. Michael, yeah, for, for me, it's just a little bit early um, with no sales. And for that reason, I'm out. Okay, Eamon. That's great. Thank you. With four dragons gone in a row, is Rugby Master missing the target? Gavin, Michael's first choice, is his last hope for an investment. Michael, you've an established track record in one of the key channels to this market, which uh, is very, very attractive. But for me personally, I, I can't get over what I perceive as a flaw here uh, from a design point of view. If I'm just throwing to, to a hole up there at 14 feet, but if that hole is moving up and I have to hit it, it just makes my training exercise much more interesting. I love you and I love your driving energy, but this is, for me personally anyway, a flaw. So I'm going to say I'm out. Okay, all right. Well, thank you all for your time. Thank you. I think yeah, you're right. I mean, there's no dynamic to this. It's a static product, and rugby is not static. No, but the worst part was he's connected. There's only a handful of people he could talk to, and he hasn't spoken to anybody yet. But that was the killer for me. I did think that Gavin was going to make an offer, yeah, I did. I was actually surprised he didn't. I thought he got the product. 